In this example, we want to find the change of coordinates matrix uh, from the basis set that we have there, which contains a set of degree two polynomials. And we're gonna take that and uh, we wanna convert into the standard basis. And then once we have the change of coordinates matrix for that, then we can find the change of coordinates matrix from, from basis C to basis B. And then using that, we can find the beta coordinate vector for minus one plus two T, okay? So first, let's create our augmented matrix, okay? So we're, we're gonna convert from beta to, to C, so that means I wanna put my corresponding vectors for C onto the left-hand side. So using the isomorphism, using the isomorphism property, okay, we're gonna get uh, for the first, right, for the first one, or for C, for the first polynomial, okay, we're gonna have one, and zero, then zero. Next one we have t, so that's gonna be zero, one, zero. And then for t squared we have zero, zero, one. Okay, again we're taking the, so we're using the isomorphism property to take the polynomial and convert it into a vector. Okay, and we're doing it from degree zero, degree one, then degree two. Okay, so next one, okay, we have uh, for beta, for that, we're gonna have one minus two, one. The second one, we have three, negative five, four. And then for the third one, we have zero, two, then three, okay? All right, so now once we, so we, we have this now, okay? So um, since this is, Right, this is the identity matrix, okay? Three by three identity matrix. So this uh, augmented system is already, this augmented matrix is already in real reduced echelon form, okay? So we don't need to do anything further here. So we have, so basically we have our change of coordinates matrix from beta to C, okay? All right, so now we gotta find the change of coordinates matrix from C to beta, okay? So we can do that by taking the inverse of this matrix that we found, okay? So B, so the change of coordinates matrix from, from uh, C to beta is gonna be the inverse of the change of coordinates matrix from beta to C. Okay. All right, so let's do that here. So one, three, zero, minus two, negative five, two, one, four, three. So the inverse of this turns out to be minus 23, negative nine, six, eight, three, minus two, and then negative three, negative one, and one, okay? All right, so this is our change of coordinate matrix from beta to C, All right? So now we can use this. Uh, we're gonna take this matrix and multiply it by the corresponding vector for minus one plus two t, okay? All right, so for this, using the isomorphism property, so this is going to be minus one, two, and then zero, okay? And uh, for the inverse matrix, by the way, uh, so this is, you can do this by hand actually. Um, remember that if you take these matrix, if you take the change of coordinates matrix going from beta C and just augment it with the identity matrix. So you're gonna have that matrix and then augment it with the identity matrix. The identity matrix will be on the right hand side. So if you go through the row operations, you end up getting, on the left hand side, you end up getting the inverse matrix. So, so that is uh, discussed, uh, we did that uh, earlier in the uh, uh, in the course. Okay, um, in this case, you can use your calculator. 
Okay, to find the inverse, that's fine. But it's important to know how to do this uh, both ways. Okay, using technology and doing this by hand. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this. All right. So we're going to have minus 23. We're going to take minus 9, 6, 8, 3, minus 2, negative 3, negative 1, 1. Okay, and we're going to multiply it by the corresponding vector for our polynomial, which was minus 1, 2, 0. So we end up getting 5, minus 2, and 1. Okay. All right, so that is, right, this represents our our vector in terms of beta. So what we can do is we can check a result. Okay, so we can take our basis, okay, and then for uh, from our solution that we have down here, so we can treat these as your weight. These are basically, your, your, you can think of them as your weights, okay, and then we're going to take those and multiply, take the first weight, multiply it by the first polynomial, the second one, take it by this, multiply it by a second polynomial, and the third weight, you take it and multiply it by the third polynomial. Expand that out, and we should be able to get back to minus 1 plus 2t. Okay, so let's let's do that. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so let me write this down here. Let's see. So let's, let me write the basis here to give you a better idea. So we have 1 minus 2t. Plus two uh, plus t squared, three minus five t plus four t squared, and then two t plus three t squared. Okay, so so that means okay. So the original the original vector that we had, okay, or the polynomial, and okay, this was in terms of the standard basis. Okay. So in, in, in B, so that means, so X in terms of C is going to be equal to 5, okay, so it's going to be 5 times, so let's, let me give these a name, let's call this uh, P1, okay, let me move this, let me make some room here, so let me call this P1. And let's call this P2, and this will be P3, okay? So now, so X in terms of, so X in terms of C, in terms of the standard basis, so we have 5, okay, times P1 minus 2 times P2 plus 1 times P3, okay? So doing this calculation, we should be able to get back to the polynomial minus 1 plus 2t, okay? So let's check. So we're going to have 5 times 1 minus 2t plus t squared minus 2 times 3 minus 5t plus 4t squared uh, plus 2t plus 3t squared. So expanding everything out, we're going to get 5 minus 10t plus 5t squared minus 6 plus 10t minus 8t squared plus 2t plus 3t squared. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Uh, so the... The five, let's see, I'm sorry, the t squared terms should cancel out, which they do. We have minus 3t squared plus 3t squared. Okay, that's going to give us 0t squared. Um, and then minus 10t plus 10t is 0, so we're left with a 2t. And then 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So we get negative 1. Uh, yeah, negative 1 plus 2t. And that's... Right, and that is the uh, polynomial, right, in terms of the standard 
in terms of the uh, standard basis that we had. Okay, so it's a good way to check your work. Okay, so all we did. Okay, so basically, if you look at if you look at this part here. Okay, if you look at this polynomial here, so that is just a different way of writing minus one plus two t in terms of our uh, polynomials in, in terms of the polynomials in our beta in, in, in terms of beta okay so this is a very nice application uh, we use this in calculus actually um, if you have a really complicated function let's say it's an let's say you're trying to integrate a uh, let's say some trigonometric trig function it's very complicated what you can do is you can change that you can re rewrite that function in terms of a different basis and then do the integral and then convert back into the original basis. So sometimes it's easier doing that. In fact, one of the uh, one of the methods from that is the u substitution. So u substitution is basically changing from one from one basis to another, okay, and then converting back. Okay. Um, there's also other techniques like the uh, uh, using the uh, triangle method for integration. Okay. So this is uh, this has lots of uh, applications, okay. Not only in calculus, but also differential equations as well, okay.